The children's author that I chose was Jacqueline Woodson, and she is an, actually an author, poet, and illustrator of over 30 children's books. Um, she was born in Columbus, Ohio, and then spent her childhood kind of split in between the South in Greenville, South Carolina, where she lived with her mom, sisters, and grandparents, and then at around age seven, um, her mom, sisters, and her all moved to Brooklyn, New York. Um, Jacqueline has always loved driving, and she once said that, I used to say I'd be a teacher or a lawyer or a hairdresser when I grew up, but even as I said these things, I knew that what made me happiest was writing. And now, Woodson has won more than 10 different awards for several of her pieces, um, and what kind of sets her apart from other authors is she isn't afraid to write about uncomfortable topics or those things that need to be talked about. Um, because of this, many of her pieces focus on things like, or on issues and things like race, um, civil rights, death, interracial marriage, etc. Um, themes of family, perseverance, and optimism she always uses and incorporates. And she says she always, um, even though she writes about things that can be kind of negative and heavy, she wants her pieces to be positive opposed to negative. So the children's book of Woodson's that I will be reading today is Show Away. And this story shows a family's path from slavery through the civil rights movement to today. So Show Away by Jacqueline Woodson. When Sonny's great-grandma was seven, she was sold from the Virginia land to a plantation in South Carolina without her pa or ma, but with some muslin her ma had gave her. And two needles she got from the big house, and thread dyed bright red with berries from the choke cherry tree. In South Carolina, Big Mama raised Sonny's great-grandma, raised most of the slave children on that large patch of land. At night, Big Mama told the children stories. Stories she'd tell in a whisper about children growing up and getting themselves free. And the children leaned in and listened real hard. And in the daytime, when there was some few minutes for a slave to rest a bit, Big Mama taught Sonny's great-grandma to sew colored thread into stars and moons and roads that slave children grew up and followed late in the night. A piece of quilt in the true moon leading them. Years passed. Big Mama moved on to the next world. And Sonny's great-grandma grew up, jumped broom with a young man named Ensler, had herself a baby girl, and named that child Nate This May. Loved that baby up so. Yes, she loved that baby up. And one day, Nate This May would be Sonny's grandma, but not for a long, long time yet. In the meantime, she learned to sew. Beautiful girl child, learn to sew. When Mavis May was seven, she got sold away. Took a star from her mama's blanket, took a little piece of the road, pressed it to her face when she wanted to rem remember back home, held it to her heart to feel back home got herself a piece of muslin and some thread somewhere and kept up her sewing. Sewed so fine she was making clothes for everyone in the big house and slaves too. And that night she sewed stars and moons and roads, tiny patch pieces of stars and moons and roads. Slaves whispered what no one was allowed to say, that Mathis knew how to make... A show away came to her when they needed to talk, came to her for stories of brave people, came to her for the patch pieces just before they disappeared into the night. But Mathis May stayed on, grew tall and straight bone, jumped broom with another sleigh. That slave was killed running off to the north side of the war months before he got to meet his baby, 
a girl child who was born free that same year, 1863. History went and lost her name. Years later, Sunny came. Sunny Mama held her up in the moonlit night, showed her the stars, the moon whispered into her ear, there's a road, girl, there's a road. Love that sunny up so. Yes, she loved that sunny up. Sunny and her mama stayed on the land they'd always known, picking cotton for a little pay and a piece of that ground to farm. Called that land home. Stayed on with other people, none of them slaves anymore. Hard work making a life, from pink day to blue black night, but it was free life just the same. And when the day was finally over, it wasn't hard to find a thing or two to smile about. At night, they cut and sewed, strange lines and odd designs. People said about Sunny, that child could find some beauty in so many things. When Sunny was seven, she was tall and straight bone like her mama. Took in wash with her mama, sewed stars on patch pieces, sewed stars and moons and roads, sewed fields and rivers and trees, Patched the pieces together for her mama to sell come market day. Called those quilts Trail to the North. Called the quilts Show Way. Didn't much need that secret trail to the North anymore, but started living well off the money those quilts brought in. Sewed those quilts to live. Sewed those quilts to remember. And though she could, could book read, most could not. Stars and moons and roads. Picture reading was what they'd always known. Some mornings... Sunny looked out over the fields of cotton and dreamed of a place to call her own. Married a man named Walter Scott, who owned a bit of land in Anderson, South Carolina. Had herself a baby girl, named that girl child Georgina. Loved that baby up so. Yes, they loved that baby up so. Georgina, who grew tall and straight-boned and free, picking out words from her mama's Bible by three. Reading by oil lamp fire light at age five, people saw that Georgina, she always had a book in her hand, grew up to teach at a small school in Anderson, had herself two girls at once, named them Caroline and Anne, loved those babies up so. Yes, they loved those babies up. And Caroline and Anne grew up tall and straight boned, turned seven, walking in line to change the laws that kept black people and white people living separate. They were a little bit scared sometimes, but pinned inside their dresses were showway patches Grandma Sooney had given them, and something about those patches made scared hang his old mean head and walk away. Anne grew up writing poems, and sometimes she made the poems into songs. Caroline st stitched those songs into art that people bought to hang up on their walls. Anne had me, and Mama loved up that baby so. Yes, she loved this baby up. When I was seven, I didn't have to work in a field or walk in any freedom lines, but I still read that Georgi G Georgiana and wrote like Anne, and when the words were slow in coming, I sewed stars and moons and roads into quilts and curtains and clothes, because Mama said, all the stuff that happened before you were you were born is your own kind of show way. There's a road, girl, my Mama said. There's a road. And I grew up tall and straight bone, writing every day. And the words became books that told the stories of many people's show ways. Had a baby and named that child Toshi Georgina. Love that Toshi up so. Yes, I love that Toshi up. So some mornings I started all over, holding tight to little Toshi. I whisper a story that came before her. Now Sunny was your great-great-grandma, and when Sonny's great-grandma was seven, the end. 
So an activity that I would do, um, I would teach Jacqueline Woodson during Black History Month in March, and students would be able to choose one of the books. Um, like I said, a lot of Woodson's pieces are about um, issues of race, civil rights, so they choose one of those books about those issues and then relate them to real issues or real events that happened in the United States and create a one to two page research paper relating the events in one of Woodson's stories to events in history.